Hey everybody watching, I'm Isaac Anderson, I'm the host of Big Bang Cinema, and I'm also the associate producer here at uh, Studio 67. I'm here with the band Ocean City. Uh, how are you guys doing? Pretty good, good man. That's good to hear. So uh, let's start out, um, so uh, how would you guys describe your music? Um, indie, pop rock, uh, alternative maybe. That's always a hard question, but then someone like totally grill us, like you need to be able to answer that question immediately. So. Indie pop rock, alternative pop rock, some along those lines. Okay. Good, 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 good. 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 That's it. about the genre, good. <laughs> the genre is good. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Uh, being from a kind of a landlocked state, how would you? Uh, how did you guys come up with the name? Well, we had been talking about a bunch of different names. It was kind of just me and my brother uh, uh, at first, and we were just kind of talking about just different things, and. Uh, we're actually named for the uh, the city in Maryland. There's an actual city called Ocean City, but uh, it came down to what we wanted to express in our music, and we wanted to cover kind of a range of emotions and ideas, and Ocean City kind of represents, uh, with a city being a construct, a very organized thing, and then an ocean being kind of this large, unstoppable, yet really chaotic thing that's still got some mystery to it. Uh, so you could simply say that it's named after a city but it's also because of that that contrast in ideas that that construct and then the kind of that that force that's this kind of chaotic oh huh. very very nice so uh <laughs> i saw the logo you had like the heart with the uh the thing through it who who can uh who designed that yeah yeah that one right there <laughs> okay who came up with that uh zach actually designed that one um and it wasn't it wasn't technically meant to be our logo. Um, we had a, a very, very short, just awful EP that we put out. It was our first release. It was called the Red Dress EP. Oh, okay. And we were coming up with, uh, and really the only people that were on that were me and Zach. Connor was on one track and then Brady he wasn't on it at all. <laughs> um, but that had three songs on it. One was called uh, Red Dress, of course. One was called... Um, what do we do? We do Greetings from Tokyo and How I Know. And the kind of the idea behind the album design for it, it's, it's just the universal sign for a girl, and it was red. And then apart from that, Zach also did one that was just a red circle for Tokyo, and then did one that was a heart and was supposed to be for How I Know. But the heart just kind of, it looked iconic to me, so I kind of I pushed for it to be kind of our, our stamp, and it, it just kind of stuck. Oh, very, very nice. Uh, so we talked a little bit kind of like your music and uh, have where uh, certain things came from. But uh, what's a typical week like uh, in the life of all the Ocean City guys? <laughs> <laughs> so you want to start with this one? Uh, well, we all also work as uh, well as do the whole band thing. And we try to spend as much time as possible to put into the band, uh, but we work. And then on Thursdays and Sundays, we have practice for two hours. And then any time between there, we can get together and hang out. Um, I'm actually a store manager for McDonald's, so that's really glorious. And then we do the whole rock star thing, so it's kind of fun to like. <laughs> it's all good, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was really funny when we started out the band. I, I worked at Shoe Carnival. Uh, which is not an affiliated sponsor or anything, not uh, trying to place an ad. <laughs> uh, now I work as a media specialist. I'm very fortunate to have kind of upgraded a job in that sense. But it, it, you're like Bray was saying, it's really humbling. You, you kind of do the, the 9 to 5 or the, uh, what is it, like the 11 to 7 or whatever, so, you know, retail or, or McDonald's, something like that, <laughs> something absurd. Uh, you go have like this amazing show where people are like, you guys are awesome. Uh, can I get your CD? And then you're like feeling pretty good about it. And then you go back and someone's like, you don't have the shoe in my side. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> like, you're just like, I'm not a rock star anywhere, but when I'm actually entertaining people on stage, so it, it keeps, keeps your feet on the ground for sure. But that's, I think that's the cool thing is we all have uh, normal jobs and then uh, just kind of do this music thing as much as we can uh, to kind of to feed the feed the beast, if you will, just kind of feel that passion. Hey, this is Ocean City, and this is our song, Feel the Night, on Big Bang Radio.
drive my car into the night Just need to get away sometimes I know we're gonna be alright But I know it's gonna take some time Here we go again Chasing dreams with coffee Everything remains the same Writing words I can't erase I'm Trying hard to make a change Here we go again Chasing dreams with coffee Starting to pretend Stars are paparazzi Off your new album, kind of. What's your favorite song off of that? Uh, some something about distance is the name of the album. Oh, that's the name, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, let's just go down. I think, I think we, we have, we have, have personal favorites. favorites. Yeah, uh, my personal favorite is uh, Blood Bank, which is actually a song that Nick wrote uh, a long time ago. Long, time. long time ago, and uh, he had an EP, and I got a hold of that EP and heard Blood Bank, and uh, it's kind of. The, probably no. It is the darkest song on the album. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, second, yeah, it's, it's definitely probably the heaviest thing. <laughs> I came from a heavy metal background, and uh, after hearing that song, it just had so much emotion and everything that I really pushed for us to bring that into Ocean City and uh, kind of rework it. And I really like what it came out to be. So yeah, that is my favorite. Very very nice. Let's go down the line. Mine's Blood Bank. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you said the story is, is, is a dark story. Uh, before we go, anybody else, what is the story about? If you don't tell me, about it? what's the story of the song? Um, sure what you want. Well, the story of the song. If if you look at the lyrics, um, the first first line of it is the blood bank is calling. And um, when I was writing the song, I was in a really dark place. I got out of a really bad relationship, and um, that's how all songs come about. Is usually girls. Um, <laughs> But I, I was just, I, I was going to going to school full time and I was living in a dorm room and I'd given blood my senior year of high school just because like everybody was doing it in, in, this, in the class, like, oh, go do this, it's a good thing to do, blah, blah, blah. But then they don't stop calling you. <laughs> they call you literally two or three times a day and I'm all for the American Red Cross Great Association, but they need to stop calling. Well, they called me one day and I was playing guitar and I was like, Ah, and so I just hung up the phone and 
like I, I wrote down the blood bank is calling and kind of like just orchestrated this whole thing and it was only a verse like I think it was just the first verse forever but it was almost like you know I'm, I'm struggling with all this internal stuff and you know I don't have much left to me to give after being inside this awful relationship and people are asking for physical pieces of me so it was kind of that whole like leave me alone I'm, I'm struggling with my own stuff oh uh, that's that's actually really cool I, that's <laughs> really, I really really like that that's, like, that's really nice let's continue with uh, the favorite songs so. though you got anything to add on your reasoning the drama <laughs> <room>. <laughs> play really loud all the time mm -hmm. um as much as I'd like to just make it a uniform, I do love Blood Bank. It was great to, to kind of use uh, someone else's words and kind of see where that connected inside of myself. But um, I'd say uh, just overall, I really like playing uh, The Girl from Iowa uh, because that was one that I had written and started and then had this vision for the beginning that I wanted to see happen and that finally happened uh, when the band got together. Uh, but I think top, if I'm gonna say number one favorite, I gotta pick Feel the Night because it kind of tells tells the story of uh, of kind of who we are as a band and how it feels to kind of like we talked about have those day jobs and then at night you kind of like chase after what you really want. So I'd say Feel the Night. Cool, cool. My turn. Yeah. Uh, I I would say my my absolute favorite from the record is Greetings from Tokyo. Um, just because of the, the story that's behind that like my senior year it was either my senior year of high school or when I had just come home from college to like spend the break or whatever and um, Zach's room was right down the hall from mine and I was trying to sleep in and my brother's in his room like before he has to go to school just pounding out these chords on the piano and I'm going stop and that turned out to be greetings from Tokyo he had had a, a dream and in his dream he heard this song were you playing it for someone yeah it was a really bizarre he dream. was playing greetings from Tokyo for somebody so he got up and like before he could get ready brush his teeth or anything he had to get that song out so I think it's just kind of cool because the hook that's in that song the arrangement of it is nothing nothing close to what it was when Zach was writing it so it's just kind of cool to you know, I was woken up by that song, and now it's become this whole other entity other than what it was. Hey guys, this is Ocean City, and this is our song, Greetings from Tokyo, off the record, something about this.
sad or like embarrassing? Like, what is the most memorable moment you guys have had so far as a band? We played a whole bunch of hometown shows just wherever we could trying to build up buzz. And we played what we jokingly called the pumpkin circuit. Because oh, it was yeah. it was fall, like right around Halloween and Thanksgiving and stuff. And we yeah, played yeah. at like every pumpkin patch <laughs> we could find. Oh, wow. <laughs> so all we did was play at pumpkin patches for like two months. And that was just garbage. It was so embarrassing. They would give us free food. Yeah, no joke, though. It was really weird. Cause we were doing this for promotion, you know, just families coming out like, hey, we're a new-ish band. Uh, can out at our, our bigger shows, you know, normal venues. At one, the people that run ran the place came up after we played music and were like, you guys were great, here's your tip money. We were like, tip money? They'd been collecting tips for the band the whole time we've been playing. They dropped like 150 bucks out of this jar. Wow. Uh, so we were just blown away, but yeah, the pumpkin patch circuit. Yeah, yeah we played <laughs> pumpkin patches like, exclusively for about a month. Free pumpkin. <laughs> and not wrong with that, man, it's buzz. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, if you could play with any musician, past or present, living or dead, uh, who would it be, and what would you play? Let's, let's start from this side. This time. <laughs> oh Lord. Um, I have I have a bunch. My my musical tastes go from just like if you look at my iPod or my my Apple Music, it's it's outrageous what's on there. Um, one of my life goals is to be featured on a Gorillaz song. Oh. I want to play with the Gorillaz at some point, um, just because I think it's cool that they're like they're not real people. <laughs> um, but I think like Living Dead, whatever. Um, I would love to. Uh, I've got a couple guitar players. I would love to sit down with. Uh, George Harrison and just kind of pick his brain. I know that's cliche, say all oh, the Beatles, but I absolutely love the way he plays guitar. Um, and then that would be my my past guy. Present, I would love to sit down with um, the guys from uh, the documentary It Might Get Loud. I'd love to sit down with Jimmy Page and Jack The White. Edge and Jack White, just because they're, they're – there's so many different ways that those guys think about the song that they're approaching. Like the edge plays maybe four or five notes per song and it's just stupid the stuff that he comes up with. Um, I don't know, I got a bunch. That's a hard question. That's good, that's a good answer. All right, let's go down the line. Uh, for me, uh, I got a bunch. Uh, probably if I was gonna meet like a hero and influence one of the greats that I would just be totally starstruck by, I'd love to meet Billy Joel. Uh, I'd love to write some music with Ryan Tedder because I think he's a freaking genius. Uh, that, would, that would definitely be a lifetime goal achieved. And uh, I've always loved the fray, so I'd love to just hang out with those guys. Uh, or at least just in a not weird way, be like, you guys influence so much. Um, but then I guess kind of closer to to our style in, in a sense, I'd, I'd like to see maybe even like a like a collaboration if this is like a just dreams come true type of thing with either a parachute and we actually had a, a cool conversation back and forth with uh, will anderson from parachute he's a cool guy but uh i've always just really liked their music i think they're totally underappreciated because i think they released one of the best albums of 2016. anyway i'm getting uh, totally away from myself but uh, parachute or ben rector i think uh they're both great and uh, i think recently we, we matched really well so cool cool I'm going to add one real quick. Yeah. I would love to do something with Travi from Gym Class Heroes. Oh, wow. So I've got to see your musical tastes in these. It's really nice. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right. I'd like to play with Tom York from Radiohead. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a, good, that's a good answer. <laughs> Anybody. Get him one of them. I'll play with the drummer. I'll drum. <laughs> that's all good. All right. Okay, um, I think I've got two main ones. Um, one is uh, Cliff Burton from Metallica, mm -hmm. uh, the sort of original basis, uh, mainly because like he, when I was younger, is the one who made me realize that uh, the bass guitar exists <laughs> <laughs> and that you can do more with it than like, hold down rhythm. 
because uh, he would play like distorted solos and everything, and I think that's like a main reason for the reason or for the way that I play. Um, another one uh, who is living would be uh, Ben Kenny from Incubus. Yes. And uh, the reason for that is, is I think that's what kind of made me pull back from doing outrageous things with the bass and kind of like be more of a bass player if that makes sense yeah so uh those would definitely be my two what motivated you uh to form a band and like what what continues to motivate you guys so i think really the the motivation uh, <laughs> uh, unless someone wanted to take take lead on this right now i think the motivation that, that kind of just pulled us together was a we all just wanted to play music. It didn't even necessarily matter if it was a band or... Brady used to sit... Well, actually, I think all of us used to sit in our rooms uh, and just just play our respective instruments for just hours and play whatever or, or nothing at all. Just kind of stare at it or... You know, like uh, like Nick said earlier, I used to annoy the crap out of him playing piano in the morning or... And likewise. <clears> and uh, our, we're actually bros, Nick and I. Uh, oh, cool. And, uh, so our mom would, would yell at him all the time to turn his amp down, and it wasn't really ever that loud, but that's, you know, neither here nor there, but uh, we just all really wanted to, and I have to give a shout out. I worked with a, uh, with, uh, you know what they call him. It's a really good friend uh, in uh, Oklahoma City. His name is uh, Marcus Hayes, and he's helped me a lot, uh, especially kind of organizing my own thoughts as a singer-songwriter and, and kind of getting to the point where I was ready to start a band. I wouldn't really say that like I pulled the guys in and started one. I feel like it just kind of happened the way it was supposed to happen. Now you pulled us in. Um, but I think it kind of it kind of webbed out of, of Marcus saying, Zach, why don't you just like get some musicians and start a band? So I, I guess in a few words, that was what, what I did. It was just kind of people that, that I knew were good and that I knew I wanted to spend time with and play music with. So and I'd like to take off on the part uh, where you asked what continues to drive us. Uh, for me, something that I think is interesting is that we all come from pretty well different musical backgrounds, what we like and what we have played in the past. Uh, Nick played like a lot of kind of like punk stuff, or at least it's what you listen to. Yeah. That sort of background. Uh, Zach likes straight up piano pop. Yeah. Pop music, essentially. Uh, Connor is more into hip hop. Sort of, not this, you can kind of describe that, I don't know. I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I came from more of like a heavy background. So pulling all of us together and just seeing what comes out is really interesting to me at least. It was weird at first. Yeah, I think we, we didn't fight ever, but it was kind of like when we started, I had a few songs that I was like, I wrote these songs, let's, let's do them how I pictured them and that doesn't work. Uh, especially I think we finally we finally found our, our stride with this this first album that we released where we were like the songs aren't gonna be what one person envisions them to be. We kinda just have to let everyone give their, their own contribution. I think that was what I think that magic, seeing everyone's different style and different knowledge about or even what they think the song should be like and seeing all that merge together, that magic is kinda what keeps it keeps it interesting, keeps it fun, keeps it going. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Okay, so um, so we talked about kind of like what motivates you, what kind of drives you. Like, what what are the ultimate goals as you guys as a band? Like, not work a day job anymore. Yeah. I just yeah. want to do music full time. I <clears throat> music's what I love. It's my passion. I, I think I speak for everybody when I I say, you know, I want people to hear our music and I want people to love it. And I, I would love to be this huge national touring act, but at the end of the day, I would be happy with just a steady, normal life income from doing what I love and making people happy with our music. Sounds good. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> you guys, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Okay. everything together. That's all good. So, uh, I mean, yeah, that? I mean uh, of course, major goal is we want everybody to hear us. Um, Love to go on tour, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, huh. I want to play Red Rocks. Yes, yeah, Red Rocks. <laughs> Red Rocks. <laughs> they won't quit. Yeah. 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 Oh man, very nice. If you don't like us, get us to show up Red Rocks. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, we kind of talked about um, what your music's all about, kind of like some personal things from you guys, some cool moments you've had. Uh, you guys currently working on anything new, like some new music projects or? 
Yes. Yes. We have a. We, we were very excited. We're, we. I think like any band that started out local, which is every band, uh, we, we definitely want to support other people. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, I talk myself into a hole sometimes. Uh, but but we really love to see the talent that's even here in our area. We. Uh, you know, we're a, a Louisville-based band, but we're all originally from a town south of Louisville called Elizabethtown. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a lot of talent, uh, even just here in E-Town, that, uh, that I don't think people even notice or pay attention to. So that's really our goal. We're collaborating very soon uh, for a new track called Unsung uh, with a local rapper. He goes by the, the name of Erite. And uh, we're just really excited. He's a close friend of ours. And uh, I don't think it... it it's kind of really interesting to see where he took what I had written and and just made it something completely his own. And so, uh, you know, kind of that, that typical formula, he'll have his own verse on that song. But yeah, that's that's the next thing you'll hear from Ocean City is Unsung featuring Eric Tay. Sounds really good. All right, now, last question. What is the best way for your fans to kind of keep up with what's happening with you? Uh, pretty much any of our social medias are going to have something on them about what we're doing currently um, but if you want to go follow up on everything you can go to oceancitymusic.com um, it's got links to everywhere that we're at um, but it's kind of our own little home home there um, but if you look on social media all of our handles all of our tags everything is at ocean city music uh, just look for the heart logo that's usually somewhere uh, and you'll find us but yeah, OceanCityMusic.com. OceanCityMusic.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, you got that announcer voice, man. Sounds good. All right, well, thank you guys so much. Uh, and uh, we, we appreciate you guys talking with us, and uh, we hope you guys have a great rest of your day. It's been, it's been great. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, guys, this is Ocean City, and this is our song, Blood Bank, off of our new record, Something About Distance. those sins but now my soul is warming up maybe this was supposed to be a test of faith blindsided terrified of what you might say maybe I was supposed to write the whole thing down pen paper heart and hand your couch